hey everyone what's up welcome to another video and today guys we're going to be editing um a couple of exposures of this same image so i took a couple of pictures of this converse um so we're going to align all of them it's like light painting and stuff so we're going to align all of them convert it to one image and then edit that so yeah let's begin okay so the first thing we want to do the first thing i want to do is to fix the screen and i've already imported the first image to photoshop so what we are going to do next is place embedded and then select all the other ones so the one we're working with now is 390 so i'm going to place 3909 right and i'm just going to place everything i'm not going to adjust it an easier thing you could probably do is open up the folder where you have the images select all of them from here and that's probably like what you should do so i've already brought this and this so we could just do this bam so now what i want to do is Wait, okay. So you have to accept for everything. Accept. Okay, so that's everything imported. Now what I want to do is highlight everything, go to your move tool and make sure everything is properly aligned. Okay, they are properly, properly aligned. Let's create a duplicate of the background and then hide the background so the background layer is going to be our template so we want everything to align to that so i'm highlighting everything pressing ctrl t to um resize and now we're just going to make everything match like that bam so now obviously you're just going to be seeing the layer that is on the utmost what you want to do is depending on the image for this one the entire image is dark and the major changes here involve brightening the image so we're going to be playing around with the lighting too so we're going to hide all these so this is what we are working with and this is the first layer so we're going to play with the lighting tool as you can see it's not if i go to darken yeah obviously to darken the image and all but lightning doesn't really affect the layer that is below it it just adds to this layer but adds the brightness of brightness of the layer above it which is mostly the um light painting stuff so i'm going to go to lighting let's try screen color dodge Ooh, i like this okay let's see something so I actually kind of like color dodge, but it's beginning to have some weird stuff. Let's see if that stuff is still there with lighting. Okay, so if you put some color dodge and you mess around with the fuel opacity, yeah, no, I kind of like that effect though. Lighter color, lighter color. Let's see lighting again. You know, let's just keep it as lighting. Let's make it simple. Then let's add this next one. Now this one is going to add light to the back of the image. Now when you are doing light painting and stuff, you want to use the light source to illuminate as much parts of the subject that you want. So I wanted the all stars and the logo to show. So I put the light on that. This on its own could make for a really cool image, but I really wanted to have the light stuff in front. So we add this and let's see what we could do with the lighting too. Yeah, no. <laughs> overlay, what does overlay look like? This could make some really cool, like I'm thinking a poster or a banner this is really cool for something like that and i'm actually try maybe on another video 
لیکن ای پوست آؤٹ آف دس بک یا لوجسٹکس وہ وی آر ٹرائن ٹو ڈو سو آئی تھنک لائٹنگ از بیٹر رائٹ ایز یو کین سی دیٹ جس ایلیمنیٹس دی بیک سائیڈ آف دیٹ سو ناؤ لیٹس ایڈ دی نیکسٹ ایمیج اوکے سو اٹس ا بیٹ اٹس ناٹ الائن پروپرلی بٹ وٹ وی کڈ ڈو فار دیٹ ایز ریڈیوس دی اوپاسٹی لیٹس زوم ان somewhere around here so we can see the star is not aligned so what we could do is manually align this so let's move this like so i think it's aligned right mm. there I don't want to be trying to be too perfect since this is just going to end up on Instagram. But as you can see, yeah, there's a very big difference before we align this and now. Okay. So now, what does this add? It kind of like still darkens the entire image, right? Okay. Okay guys so yeah my little sister is right here <laughs> we are probably going to be hearing her voice sorry for that <laughs> okay so where were we um yeah we added this layer and as you can see it's kind of like cropped out over there let's see it's to screen okay so it's not really adding much So this adding this kind of weird stuff and for this i think i made a like top down like oh, i don't know what it's called man kind of like the light was at the top so i'm really not sure what this could add to the image let's see oh it's adding some bling <laughs> so because of the way the lights was adjusted i guess so if you look over here and here you see some change oh it's all so it's basically kind of like brightening the metals on this oh i like that it's subtle but it's cool okay let's go to the next one so this one has this and adds a little bit more of the shine on the floor so let's hit lighting oh let's see other colors lighter color let's see lighter color that looks cool then let's see lighting so let's see the difference lighter color and there's really no difference <laughs> okay so i'd say that's good enough right it's okay let's see the next one Ooh. honestly i was just playing with lights <laughs> this looks like smoke though so i probably took matches lit it and then like i don't know how i got i can't remember how i got this effect honestly but yeah so let's just lighten this as well right and don't worry it's getting overexposed we always we, we can always adjust that i shot all of this in raw so we have a lot to be able to adjust then this is like the finishing effect i like the glow over here as well so let's see what happens then bam oh <laughs> that just takes it to a whole other level so now what i'm going to do is select everything right group it in these shoes i guess and so oops this is the before this is the after look at that now let's remove this one so now we can actually start adjusting the image itself so i want to drop the brightness a bit okay that's good let's up the contrast yeah and usually what i do is create um, multiple layers like merge layers and use um camera filters on a smart layer but for this particular one i want to see if i can work using just this and then only have to use the camera filter when i want to apply my 
filter, um, filter uh, lots, whatever. <laughs> so we just did the brightness and contrast. Let's bring up the curves. Let's bring this up just a little bit. And then let's see what happens when I bring this down. Nah. You know what? Let's leave it like this. I kind of like this. I like this. So let's try and add some fade to this image. So I want to add the one here. And to add one here, and to add one here, add another one here, and move this. Come on, go up. This, eh, it's not how I planned it to look. Okay, so bam. So let's see the before and after. It's affecting just. You know what? I don't think I like the food. Or do I? No, let's just leave it there. Let's just name this fade. Okay, so we've added fade. Let's see what we can do with. Which one do we want to work with? Uh, selective color. Okay, so let's go to the reds and see what happens. Cyan. Ooh, this is cool. Let's keep it at minus twenty. So magenta. Uh, I think I want less magenta, right? So yellows, yellows. Okay, definitely more yellows. Yeah. Then what does? I just put that back on zero. <laughs> Let's go to the yellows now. And basically, what I'm doing is, as you can see, these colors here: cyan, magenta, yellow. They are basically the opposite of red, green, and blue. R G B C M Y. So me adjusting this sliders is adjusting how much of cyan is going to be in the image. Now the issue, the thing here is if you remove one of these colors, you are introducing the opposite of that color. So me reducing, me adding cyan is adding cyan to the reds of this image, right? We are in the red tab, cyan. Me taking out cyan is removing cyan, but it's adding red. So RGB, right? So I'm basically adding more red to the image. So I'm adding red to the reds of this image, which is kind of like intensifying that. If you go to cyan and I take out cyan, I'm removing cyan from this image, but I'm adding red to the cyans of this image. Hope that's easy to understand. If you have more questions about that, leave that in the comment. I'll probably make another video and talk more on that. But yeah, so I think I want a lot of red in this. So let's go to the yellows. Do I want to add cyan or take out cyan? Let's add just a little bit of reds to the yellows. Now magenta, do I want to take it out, add more magenta? Taking it out has kind of like a red, I feel like this. So I'm taking out the magentas from the yellow and we know that RGB, CMY, the opposite of M is R, right? So I'm basically adding more green sorry rg okay the opposite of magenta is green so i'm basically adding more green to the yellows since that's the so all the places where yellow is showing i'm adding green to it right so for the actual yellow you want to take out the yellow rgb that means i'm adding blues to the yellow or do I want to add yellows to the yellow basically intensifying it this is a cool way of increasing saturation of some colors and i think i want to add yellows Hold on to. Uh, I kind of like to do two looks. <laughs> okay, let's just add. Let's just add yellows to this. Okay, so let's go to blues. What do we want to do with the blues? Oh, look at the style of the on the logo there. If I bring it here, I'm adding reds to the blues. If I bring it here, I'm adding cyan to the blues. And I kind of want the blues to pop more so do we want to add magenta or green okay definitely add magenta i don't like look at that i don't like that look so we're going to have a lot of this is just trial and error really seeing what you like not necessarily what works but what you just like what makes the image look a lot more pleasing to you go on to add let's just add blue all the way so before after before after and see is having this nice feel to it so cyan to the magenta or red to the 
Are there even that? Oh wow! Wait, it's also affecting this. So I guess this is kind of like a mixture of blues and okay. I want this to be blue. <laughs> okay, so this makes it a little bit. This makes it look more teal. Why this makes it look still has that? Okay, let's just leave this on the azure. Then yellows. Do I want to add yellows or take out yellows? I want to take out yellows. Okay, so let's see the before and after the color changes we've done. And this looks pretty cool, pretty good. We could also change play around with the color modes, but I don't really think that does much to it. Yo, I'm so turning this into a sticker. So the first one we tried was linear light with one of the layers. And now look what happens when we do this. Color burn. I love this effect. I <laughs> but yeah, no, let's not do that. Overlay. You know, we could actually add oh, soft light before and after, right? So now let's play around with the opacity. Yo, yo, <laughs> that that okay. So before the blending option and everything, this is what it looked like, right? Then with the blend, oh my god, oh my god, this looks cool, man. This looks freaking cool, man. Okay, so I'm leaving that. <laughs> what else do we want to adjust? Gradient map, threshold, posterize, color lookup. Let's try color balance. Color balance kind of like helps with adding some more contrast to the image. So for the shadows, I want to add blues and make it have that blue, nice kind of feel to it. And the reason why I love editing inanimate things like products and stuff is because you can do so much crazy things with it and it just looks so cool. But with human beings, you have to be careful with skin tone and all of that. But yo, okay. This kind of looks cool, but not so cool. Okay, I kind of like having some green. Let's see what happens. Oh, magenta all the way, man. So add reds or cyans. Reds or cyans. Reds or... I think I want to add cyans to this. So now let's go to the mid-tones. Reds or cyan. Let's add some red to the mid-tone. Now green. I generally don't like adding greens to my images, but for this, I think green, a little bit of green is okay. So blue or yellow, blue or yellow, blue or yellow, let's add some blue to this. Wait. No, let's add some yellows to this. <laughs> I actually like that. So let's go to highlights and let's see what we could do with this go all the way oh my god oh my god this looks so cool and the blues are really popping i really don't know guys i really don't know <laughs> you know what let's just go for the cyans for this magenta or green magenta or green or magenta or green let's add some green to this the highlights yes then Yellow or blue? Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> oh gosh! Like you just create so many new looks that you don't know which one you prefer. So before and after. It's adding some contrast, but if you want to add some more contrast, you can always use one of the overlay options, you know. I've been looking at this effect for so long. Let's see if we can tone down this. You know what? You know what? Okay. <laughs> no, it's not working for what I want it to work for. So, soft light. Uh, oh, let's bring it back to 100. Sorry. Uh, overlay, soft light. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Uh, let's just leave it as normal. Right, but let's reduce the opacity a bit like 50%. 
right i feel like that's okay so that's for color balance what else do we want to do um hue and saturation let's see what happens when we adjust the hue Put it on one. I want to drop the saturation or increase the saturation. You know what? Let's drop the saturation. Like minus six seems okay. I want to make it lighter or darker. No, let's do that. Right. So now we can actually play with the individual colors. So let's look at the blues first. Let's see what happens when we play around with the blues. Any big difference? not really let's just bring this up to 11 let's go to the cyans Ooh, oh my god yo okay let's bring this up all the way then let's go for the yellow let's see what we can adjust nope at all let's just leave the yellows as it is let's go to the reds what works what doesn't work you know, I just want to bring the blues up, honestly. The other ones don't look... What? The other ones don't look as cool. Okay. So, hue saturation. Just makes the blues pop. Right? Just look at this. Without... It. It's very slight, but... It's, it's actually showing. Okay, so what else do we want to do? Gradients, solid color vibrance color balance uh photo filter what is that? Okay. so now let's just add some contrast to this so basically i could use black and white layer and i got this from sean Parker. so basically you want to adjust this to a point where the contrast is good enough for you the okay, greens don't really change much. Okay, I want to have this place to be flat. Do I want no? I want focus to be on this, right? So I'm going to adjust this in a way that it, everything is dark but this, right? So it's kind of like and I want those blues to pop as well. You can see this, right? Magenta. Uh, let's bring this up some more. Bring this down some more. I want this to go down okay something like this is okay now put it on overlay and bam but this is always going to be very harsh you want to bring it down like five let's see before and after it's too low so let's take it up to like 10. and you can see that contrast is beginning to come in you can see that right so 15 15 looks good you know let's go something crazy like 30 30 is cool i feel like it's a little bit too much let's go down to 20 20 and that looks cool we've added some contrast to this i think i like this so that was for contrast the color balance also added some contrast then let's go to levels and i don't think i can actually adjust anything over here yeah you've made use of the entire okay we can add a little bit of black i guess i just leave it like that and let's see the before and after before everything and after everything look at that so um uh what else what else what else do we want to do we could actually add a gradient map now the thing about gradient, ma gradient maps is it kind of gives your images a feel so for people that use gradient maps a lot you'll see that especially on instagram grids it's almost like each image has this look to it that looks that is just cohesive and it's usually because of gradient map and the thing about gradient maps is you can add this to all you can save this as a preset and add it to all your images and just adjust the opacity and it looks what wait what yo 
I feel like this. This ain't half bad. I like weird things. <laughs> what happens if we bring this down like 50%? This actually looks pretty cool. This actually looks pretty cool. I kind of like this. I'm going to leave that. <laughs> I'm definitely going to leave that alone. So yeah, like gradient maps, what was I saying? Yeah, so you basically come here, adjust it. They have presets, but you can create your own presets. Go crazy with this and then save it as like something that you'd add to all your images and then just adjust the opacity and all your... So like this now, if I open another image and I apply this, obviously it's going to be the entire thing that will make each image look similar, but this just helps you out a lot with being consistent. I think this is pretty good. So now what I could do is group everything, right? And look at that. Now I'm going to add a merge layer on top of everything. Going to do that now. I'm going to convert this to a smart filter. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Then filter, um, camera filters. Okay, so we could go to presets, and I have my Trusty first preset over here. <laughs> so we, when I make presets, I generally just use curves and that's it. So yeah, that's basically the entire process for me. So it's just about putting the curves and working the basic sliders every time I bring in a new image. So for this, I could add some shadows, take out some of them highlights. Some whites, take out some blacks. Uh, wait. Yeah, I think I want to take out the blacks a bit. So, clarity, let's do that. Do we want that much clarity? Okay, that's too much. Let's put it around 16. Bring up the contrast, the haze, just a little bit. Then, vibrance. I want to take out some vibrance, or add some vibrance. So, take out add. You know, let's leave this. I'll use Photoshop's own um, layers, adjustment layers to add vibrance. So, white balance for me is majorly. I add it some. I work with it sometimes. I don't work with it sometimes. It's, it's just hit and miss. Sometimes I use it. Sometimes I don't use it. Like this, I don't think I want to use it. Yeah, I don't think I want to use it. Now, I use noise reduction to re obviously noise reduction to remove noise, but majorly to kind of soften the image and it works well. I just bring, I literally just use it to soften the image. I don't even care about noise, <laughs> just to soften the image. And I just started doing this some time ago on my portrait account on Instagram. But like, adding this just makes. I just like the look. Okay, and I don't think there's any more to do. As you can see, I've added some split tone into this image as well. Lens correction, grain, all this stuff I really don't. Camera filter, and bam. There you go. Then I see the before and after. Before and after. And bam, we are done. Now we could create another layer on top of this to make it sharp, you know? So how to do that, you go to filter. No, first convert it to smart filter. So you can always adjust everything later on. And I'm going to do make an effect with this, kind of like a bonus thing for you guys. But first of all, oh, you know what? Let's do that first, let's do that first. So let's create this. I like to do the sharpening of the entire thing after I'm done with the entire image. So layer, right? What we want to do is duplicate this, Control J. Then with the duplicated layer, you know what, I'm just going to group all of this so it doesn't confuse me. So with the duplicated layer, let's name this, um, uh, what do we, soft blur, I guess. 
soft blur so we'll go to image uh apply image we're going to select the layer below that which is layer 2 right layer 2 leave it on multiply leave everything the way it is hit ok then we're going to go to uh screen right hit ok right and that is that i got this from chris house channel so what you do now is hit filter blur i usually want to put the blur to the megapixel of your camera see i don't know all the technical stuff to all these things all i know is wait did i just actually sorry gaussian blur <laughs> what am i doing i don't know the technical stuff to all this but i just like the effect honestly and i just play around with things to adjust the effect so screen right and we've added that so look at that what we could do now is to drop this to like 50 and look at that what i usually like to do now which is something i just add to this is to take it out of the black layers using the blend if options so dragging the underlying layer from left to right removes it from the black areas but if you look the it's not blending well so you hold alt and click on this and drag them apart the further apart these things are the smoother the transition and if you look at this so let's hit ok and before and after and you can see that that blur is just on the highlights it's not affecting the darks so like look at this area it's not going to change at all right but then if you look at let's say this area you can see the difference but like, i thought i don't and when you do something like this usually you re reduce the fill because it's on the entire thing and it's too much but when you do something like that you can actually increase the fill to the max so you can actually have that effect show well on all the top layers as you can see that looks cool I actually want it to show a lot more so I'm going to bring this edge back a bit right and to make it blend a lot more I'll just drag it to the other side so I think that's cool you see the before and after before after before after and we have that soft oh my god look at the logo guys we have that soft blur on everything so now what we can do after we've done this create another merge layer on top of it we can delete this layer too actually because we don't need it anymore so delete that create another layer filter convert for smart filter so we can re-edit the adjustments we apply come on come on come on come on okay now we'll go to filter other then high pass and use this to just add so i usually just use the 1.0 change this to overlay and bam look at how sharp it got look at how sharp it got so this is before right and this is the after now if you don't like it because we made it a smart layer we can actually increase this to like let's say 2.0 which is going to be harsh i feel right hit ok and applies it automatic automatically now hit screen before after are you really and the good the thing about sharpening is you never want your sharpening to be at the point when people can visibly see that, that oh my god he actually sharpened it. you can see the edges here there's some weird halloween on it before edges are just so sharp after i've done that can you see can you see the difference can you see the change before after we generally don't want to have this so the, at this point i know i've gone too far so i'm going to take it back just double click on the adjustments i think 1.0 was just fine not too much and not too little that you can really see and that's that so we've sharpened it i'm going to call this sharpen and there are tons of more um, effects you can apply to your images let's see the before and after there are tons more effects you can apply to your images but i'm just going to leave it at this you know so now save this as a tif file 
Okay, so this is the image. I'm just going to drag that to Lightroom. Drop it in here. Blah, blah, blah. Import. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what, uh, what I want to do now is going to develop. Develop, develop. I don't even care. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be too bright in some areas. So what we could do now is just clear around some more. Let's drop the highlights some more. I want to raise the shadows or leave the shadow. Okay, let's just leave it like this, right? Uh, so one cool thing that I recently picked up from someone, Peter McKinnon, <laughs> was adding an S curve to all the channels of your stuff, of your image. So. One cool thing I do is I hold Alt when I'm adding this point so it doesn't move the line at all, right? So let's just add the points on all of them. Then to the green one. A funny thing is I've actually seen Evan Ram do this a long time ago. When he did, he literally just uses similar, excuse me, curves to all of them. I'm just going to do that for this one. Go to the green shadow. Do the same thing. Oops. Right. Do that like so. And then bring this down as well. And bring this up as well. Let's see the before and after. It's not that much. You can actually even go crazy. I like really make it work, you know. Bring this down a lot, bring this up a lot. To the reds, bring this down a lot, and bring this up a lot. And now let's see. Can you look at that? Could actually bring this up just a little bit. And then go to the gradings and bring this up just a little bit. Blues, bring this up just a little bit. I feel like the stuff is, the curve is too intense. So we are going to reduce that as well. It's too intense, it's too sharp. Okay. Something like this is good enough. Now let's see the before and after, before and after. I like that. I like that. I think I like that. You know, I prefer the before. <laughs> I don't like that. Let us go back to the shadows. So why we didn't adjust that at all. So yeah, we could make it align a little bit more. Bring this closer. No, I don't want to cut out the way. How is this? How is this aligned? <laughs> Please tell me how. Uh, I guess we have to do it ourselves then. Let's bring this out more. Right? Someone once said the best, what makes um, a great art is removing things from it that what makes a great artist is knowing when to remove things i don't know exactly how that makes sense it makes sense kind of <laughs> but i guess just cropping out things that you feel don't necessarily add to the image so i try to always crop my images to the point where it feels natural I'm not losing anything, but also I'm not making them see the entire stuff. I think that is pretty good. Let's bring it out a bit more. Something like that. Let's bring this in just a bit. Okay, done. And I think this is cool. I think. I think the contrast is too much there. 
let's leave it like this no clarity sorry yeah clarity i think clarity is too much i think you know what let's, let's do something Let's not just touch the clarity. I think this is pretty good. Before, after Photoshop, after lighting, after Photoshop, after lighting. I basically just reduce the contrast. And, okay, uh, yeah. So that's pretty much everything. You can actually come here to adjust some more things. But I think I'll leave it like this. Because this video is getting really long i think <laughs> but yeah that's everything this is the image now it's just to export it and we'll be done so yeah thanks guys for watching uh for following me through this editing process catch you all in the next video leave a like subscribe you know the stuff that youtubers usually ask for <laughs> but yeah thanks for watching and i hope you learned if you have any questions let me know in the question section below and yeah i'll catch you all later peace